This is the Salsa Moraine e-bike. It is a long travel trail oriented electric mountain bike. I have been riding it for a while now and I have rarely had as much fun on a bike as I have had on the Moraine. As the name would suggest, it is intended for like big mountain epics, alpine riding, the sorts of rides you might normally do on a Saturday epic ride, but that you don't have enough time to fit in with your busy life during the week and this bike can get you further, faster, in a shorter amount of time. In addition to those big mountain rides, it also works really well at doing laps at the bike park. I've used it for towing my son and all around had a blast. It's not only the bike that's gonna get you uphill, it's also a really rowdy, capable descender. The first thing I noticed when I took this out of the box was its appearance. It does not look like a big, dorky e-bike. It is sleek, it is streamlined. You can't tell just at first glance that it is an e-bike. There's not anything big and bulky down at the bottom bracket. The battery is integrated into the frame. Aside from the display here on the top tube, there's nothing that screams e-bike or makes it immediately noticeable to passerby that you have an electric assist. I also want to point out that it is rideable with electric assist turned off. Yes, it's heavy, but I was able and able to manage it on the trails just fine when I turned it off. And I did this a couple times because I was riding trails that do allow e-bikes, but looping it with trails that don't allow e-bikes, and I would just turn off the e-assist when the time came for that. The next thing I noticed about the Moraine was its size. It runs quite large. This is a size small. I am five foot five and a half inches and I normally ride a size small bike, but this was bigger than any of the other bikes in my stable, including the size small uh, Salsa Cutthroat. So both the reach and the standover height are pretty high on the size small frame. It is advertised as fitting riders as small as five foot two inches. I cannot imagine somebody at five foot two fitting well on this bike. I would highly recommend going to a professional bike fitter and getting some suggested reach and standover height measurements for you and or comparing the reach and standover on this bike to your other existing mountain bikes to make sure that it's going to be a good fit for you. Small is the smallest frame size that the bike comes in, so I think this to me was the biggest con about the bike was just that it's not going to be a good fit for smaller riders. In terms of the electric drive system, I absolutely love this bike. It has the Fizua Ride drive system. I have previous experience with this. My son has it on his e-bike and it is handled really well over the long term. It has three power levels and you can easily switch between them by pushing the lever on the handlebar. The power setting you are in is indicated with a unique light color. Green, for example, is the lowest power assist setting. The battery level is indicated by the number of lights that are lit up. Once you play with it for a few minutes, this design is highly intuitive and I prefer this display to a bulky computer on the handlebar. I spent a majority of my time riding in the lowest power setting. This preserves battery life and I still got a workout. I did rides of up to 35 miles was my longest, and when I ended, I still had two battery indicator lights on, so I could have definitely gone further. When I got to a really, really steep spot, I would bump up the power assist level, but for just getting a little extra help on climbs, that lowest setting worked great. The bike has 60 newton meters of torque compared to like 90 on the Specialized Turbo Levo. I can't really imagine why you would need more than 60. For me, it was perfect. I was still able to get a workout and I just got that extra boost to go further and faster. It felt like riding my normal bike, but just feeling extra fit. One thing I haven't loved testing other e-bikes is that on-off filling of the power kicking in and off. And on this bike, I just felt like it was really smooth. It's also quiet. Especially in that lowest power setting, it's, it's not very noticeable. The more you turn up the power, obviously the louder it gets. When it, time, it comes time to go downhill, the bike is a blast. It has a 160 millimeter RockShox silo fork up front, 145 millimeter RockShox float shock in the rear. 
I'm the kind of person who often will give up some travel in order to have a lighter bike. With the e-assist, it doesn't matter. You have help that going uphill. And so I just thought it was super fun to have this long travel bike. It has modern geometry, really burly tubeless tires on it. And it made it for a really rowdy fun to sunder. The Marine is marketed as a lightweight electric mountain bike. And compared to some of the really big behemoth e-bikes on the market, it is. However, at 48 pounds, it's still about 10 pounds heavier than the Orbea Rise, for example. And while I felt like I was able to maneuver the bike just fine, it did become a problem for me as a female with a weaker upper body, getting the bike on and off my Velocirax bike rack, for instance, I could feel that extra weight. Um, if I were to run into a down log out on the trail and I had to like lift it up and over something, I think I would struggle. That's not a criticism unique to this salsa moraine it's just something that you want to consider in general with electric bikes is that additional weight and how you are going to handle it the bike uses a split pivot design that aims to accomplish two things the first according to salsa is that it isolates pedaling forces and braking forces from each other the braking portion of that claim i don't take any issue with uh, pedaling is it the most efficient pedaler that i've ever been on no it is not I did feel bob when climbing, but it has an electric assist, so I don't feel like it has to be the most efficient climber. The second intent of this design is to allow for different travel setups. The bike comes with this 160 millimeter fork, but you, put, but you could put a 140 fork on here, and in the rear you could go as, as low as a 125. I can definitely see the attraction to a to a shorter travel trail bike there's not a lot of those on the market right now but the issue with this is that it doesn't come as a frame only or and it doesn't come with customizable travel options so I can't see a lot of folks buying it with this travel setup and changing the fork and the shock after the fact but if you wanted to that is an option it also has a flip chip which can make small changes to the geometry the most significant use of this would be that you could put 27 and a half inch wheels on rather than the 29 inch wheels it comes with. And this could be a way to maybe get um, shorter standover for women who are closer to that five foot two inch point. The bike comes in two different build levels, the Shimano Dior 12, which is what I've tested here, as well as the Q's 10. The difference on these two is the drivetrain and the brakes. The Dior comes in about $1,000 more expensive. I think it's worth it personally to have a bigger range of gears. Although with an e-bike giving you assist going uphill, maybe you don't necessarily have to have that bigger range. And then just also the efficiency of the braking. I use on my personal bike, the Dior brakes. Um, I think they're great. Four pistons and 200 milli rotors on this. Uh, offer great stopping power, which we really want with the heavier weight of an electric bike. One thing of note is the storage on the bike. There is a pass-through slot on the frame to put a strap to hold the tube, a pump, whatever else you want to put in that spot. And then there's also eyelets for a water bottle cage. Unfortunately, unlike a lot of salsa bikes that offer customized bags, there's not currently one for the Moraine. That'd be cool to see in the future. And the other thing worth noting is the limited color options. The Dior only comes in this orange frame. The Q's comes in a black frame. And if you're like me, you might want some more playful feminine colors. That limited range was kind of a bummer in my opinion. It has a Trans X dropper and a WTB Volt saddle. This was far from the worst stock saddle I've ever put on a bike. But for women, you'll probably want to upgrade to a women's specific saddle. Bottom line is that the Moraine doesn't look like a dorky e-bike. It made otherwise hot and hard rides an enjoyable cruise, and it let me practice my downhill skills by doing repeat laps at the bike park. It's quiet, stealthy, and kind of lightweight. The only bummer here is that it won't fit smaller riders. More inclusive sizing for women and junior riders would be appreciated. But for the vertically blessed, the Salsa Moraine might just be your ticket to bigger, longer, more fun-filled rides. Thanks for watching and head on over to our website, femcyclist.com, 
for more detailed bike reviews and product guides. Until next time, happy riding.